Chloe from the Witch's Almanac and today I'm going to show you how to make rosemary shortbread, one of our personal favorites. You're going to need a fresh rosemary plant or dried if that's all you have, one stick of butter already melted, one and a quarter cups of flour, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, one quarter teaspoon of salt, and a quarter cup of sugar. Or if you like your shortbread a little sweeter, you can put in as much as a third of a cup. First we'll take your rosemary, and we'll cut off a few sprigs, about like this. I'm going to strip the leaves from the stem. stems are way too hard to be putting in your shortbread. I'll take a little more. What you want to end up with is about two tablespoons of chopped up rosemary. If you're using dry, that equals about two teaspoons of dry. So I just like to use kitchen shears for this. Gives me a good idea of the size of the pieces. We need a little more. Don't be afraid of using a lot of rosemary. It's lovely in this. Make sure you put it in the bowl and not on the head. stingy with your rosemary. There was a famous writer that said rosemary is an herb of remembrance. Look it up. Who said it? Once that's all chopped, you're going to place it in your melted butter and just stir that up a little bit. sit and let those flavors melt. Take your mixing bowl. I'm going to put in your one and a quarter cups of flour. All your dry ingredients. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Get all that in there. Quarter teaspoon of salt. And your quarter cup or a third of a cup if you prefer, of sugar. Mix up those dry ingredients. And then take your rosemary and butter mixture. Pour it in. Make sure you get all of that nice rosemary in there. And you're going to mix it up. It may feel to you like there's not enough liquid. There really is. If you have trouble mixing it, use your hands. And remember, cooking is magic. Put some energy into this as you're doing it. It's not going to look like a cake batter when you're done. It's crumbly. You can cook this in a pie plate, or if you prefer, we'll see later, an 8x8 square pan. And just pour that right in. There's no need to roll out dough for this recipe. Now you're going to press it in with your fingers. And again, remember, you put your personal energy into this. People will taste the difference. Some people 
people say it's cooking with love. As you press this in, it's going to make the sides come up. So make sure you go around the sides with your fingers to push it back down again. Because if the sides are higher, they get crispy. Now take a fork, and you're going to poke holes in it. Whatever number you'd like. If you have a personal number that's special to you or sacred, feel free to use it. When you're done with that, you're going to take the pie plate or whatever you've used and put it in your oven that you've already preheated to 350 degrees. That will bake for 20 to 25 minutes or until the edges are lightly brown. This is one we've made in an 8x8 pie plate. And as you can see, it's already cut. You have to cut it immediately when it comes out of the oven or it gets too hard afterwards and the pieces won't look nice. This makes enough for 13. Now for a special treat, you can also add chocolate chips to the batter or even put a coating of something like Nutella on the top. If you'd like more information on this recipe, Go to witchesalmanac.com and it will be all written out for you. And remember, there's a little witch in all of us.